I'm sleepy too. Have a seat. Come on up. There's plenty of room for everybody. Very good. Good morning, good morning. You heard the story today, right? Yes. The father has two sons, right? A younger one and an older one. And the younger son, he says, hey, I want all my inheritance. Do you know what an inheritance is? Yeah. Um, what right, like what your parents have, and when they would pass, you would normally get that, right? But he wants it now. He doesn't want to wait. He thinks he's got everything figured out, and he's going to take whatever he gets, and he's going to enjoy his life. And he runs and does that, right? And we know, we hear in the story that trouble happens to him, right? He spends everything, and then a famine comes, and then he's saying to himself, my goodness, what did I do, right? I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. I did this wrong thing. Have you ever lost something that you've really cared for or even loved, you say? Yeah? What did you lose? Huh? A secret? Okay. <laughs> what did you lose? My fish. Your fish. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah? My dog. Your dog, okay. Did it come back? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, you're a hamster and it came back. I had that same kind of experience. I was in the rectory one night. And you know, maybe most of you know that I have a kitty cat, right? A cat named Lila. Well, she's only a house cat. She only stays in the house, right? She doesn't know how to go outside. She wouldn't know how to survive. And so we're, we always make sure she doesn't go out. Well, one night, I was looking for her in my rooms, and I didn't see her. I said, uh-oh, she must have got out of my room. So I started looking around the rectory. And I'm looking around, looking around, going into the basement, going into closets. I'm starting to look everywhere. I didn't find her for like 20 minutes. And then Father Sean, at that time, he was still here, and he saw me, and he said, what's going on? I said, Lila, the cat, I don't know, she's, she's not here. He says, oh, she has to be here. So we both started looking. We're looking and looking and looking. It was, I was, it was winter time. It was cold outside. I was getting panicked, you know, because I thought, where is she? Where is she? I don't know where she's gone to. And just as I was beginning to give up and I was starting to look outside, I opened the door and called to her and all that. Then I came back in and in the kitchen and Father Sean's all the way somewhere else. And then I suddenly look into the hallway and there she is, just sitting there, like all calm, you know, like, hmm, what's the matter? What's going on? You know? And I was, oh my goodness, I was kind of angry, but I was so happy to see her. I, what, did, what did you think I did? I ran to her. And I scooped her up in my arms. And I said, oh, Lila, you're, you're here, you're here. And then I noticed she was all gray. My cat is mostly white. I said, what's all dust and stuff? I said, where was she? And we backtracked, and we found out where she had gone. She's a very curious cat, all you know cats are. And she had managed to go downstairs, hop onto a desk, and she saw the ceiling tile was open. And I don't know how, she jumped up there. And she must have been in the ceiling, and she got full of all kinds of dust and everything else. And she was dirty, and I, I had to wash her. Can you imagine having to wash a cat? They don't like that, right? <laughs> but I was so happy to have her back, you know, safe and sound. And that's what's happening in the story today. When the young son takes his inheritance and goes away, and then he gets into trouble, he spends all his money, he doesn't have a place really to stay anymore, he doesn't even have food. It says in our story that he longs, that he hired himself out to feed the swine, to feed pigs, you know? You know, pigs are dirty kind of animals, right? They like the mud, but they do that to keep themselves protected from the sun. They're not really dirty, they do it for a purpose. But he, he wants the corn that they have there, and he, he can't even have that. And then he realizes and says, I'm going to go back to my father. Did you hear the story? What does he say? He's going to say to the father. What does he say? Anybody? What does the young son say to the father? Yeah? Right. I have sinned against you. Just treat me like one of the workers that you have. I'm not even worthy to be your son. What does the father say? What does the father do? Yeah? What, what does he do? Yeah. 
the celebration, right? He runs to him, right? And he says, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on him, the best robe, put sandals on his feet, slaughter the fattened calf so that we can have a celebration. I have my son back safe and sound. He loves his son no matter what. In the story we hear that after he had left, the son had left, the father is always looking for him. Okay? He's always looking, hoping that he's going to come back, going to realize that, you know, this was the wrong thing to do. He doesn't want to punish him, though. He doesn't want to punish him. Now, you know, when, like Lila, I was mad at her, right? She got me so panicked, so crazy, that kitty cat. You know, I was kind of upset. I was kind of angry, but like I said, no. I loved her so much. I was so happy to have her back. I didn't, I didn't punish her. Actually, I gave her a treat, so she probably will go to the ceiling again. <laughs> But that's the message that God has for us in this story today, that no matter what we do, okay, just like your moms and dads, your grandma and grandpas, have you ever done something wrong that you know is really wrong and you, you think, oh my goodness, they're not, gonna, they're, gonna, not gonna be, uh, they're not gonna accept my forgiveness. They're not gonna say, okay, it's okay. You're afraid, right? They might say, you're not forgiven. Have you ever got that feeling? Yeah, yeah, you have? I've had that feeling too, and it's very serious, right? But when they found out, did they love you? They still loved you, right? They love you no matter what. You can do anything, you know, of course good, but sometimes we do bad things, but we, our parents, our grandparents, the people that love us, our family, no, they're always going to love us. They want us safe and sound no matter what. You can always tell them what's going on in your life, okay? they're never going to be so mad that they cast you out. Just like the story. The father brings him back into the household. They're having a celebration. Then we hear the second son. And what does he do? He gets angry, right? He gets kind of jealous, right? He says, hey, all these years I've been with you, I've done everything you asked for me to do. I've never complained. And you didn't even let me celebrate with a, a, a goat with my friends. Is that a good attitude? No, right? That's not a good attitude either, right? Both of them are kind of wrong, right? And again, it's jealousy, right? We don't want to be jealous of, you know, our, our brothers and sisters or anybody, really. That's, a, that's not a good thing. But his father says to him, everything that I have is yours. We divided the inheritance. This one wasted it all, but everything we have now is, is yours. And yet, we have to celebrate because the other one was lost and is found. He was dead and has been saved. He has come back. That's the message that God has for us today. We can always, always turn to God. He will never push us away. He will never say, no, I'm not going to forgive you. You stay outside the house and we have nothing to celebrate. That's not the message of God. God says, always come to me. I'm always like the Father. I'm always looking for you. I'm always longing for you. Even when you turn away, I'm looking for you. And when you come back, when you say, I'm sorry, come into my arms, and I wrap you in the love that I have for you. So long as you are safe and sound, that's most important to God. That's most important to your parents and to your grandparents and to all your family. And it should be most important for you too, for one another and for your, your family and friends. You want always to be safe and sound. You want to always be in that love of family and the love of God, right? Can we remember that? Yeah? So we don't want to be jealous, but we don't want to be foolish and, and be like the first son either. We want to be what God wants us to be. We don't have everything figured out like the first son thought. All right, I got it all figured out. I'm going to do what I want to do. And we see that he falls into a trap, okay? He gets into trouble. But when that happens, we can always, always turn back. We can always say, I am here again, and I'm sorry for what I did. Will you love me? And what will God or your parents or grandparents say? All together. I love you too. Yes, I love you too. You want to say that? We love you. I love you. Oh, that's kind of weak. Come on. I love you. Love you, okay? We love all of you. Okay, go back to your seats. Give mom and dad a hug, grandma and grandpa, whoever it is out there. <clears throat> and
And for our, our parents, our grandparents, whoever is, is with us today, the message of God, of course, is clear in this, this passage, as I explained or tried to explain to the children. God always wants us to come back. He's always looking for us. He's always searching, even when we do wrong things, even especially when we do grievous things. It has happened to me, grievous, grievous sins. And I think, my God, I can't, I can't be forgiven. But I know that God will forgive. The problem is I can't forget. You know, that's, that's the problem. That's the sin that is, is on my, my heart. But encourage your children, of course, always to talk to you, always to anything. You know that. They should be able to come to you with anything that is on their hearts, just like they can come to God and you can come to God with anything that is heavy on your heart, anything that you have to confess. God is never going to say no. God is never going to say, I don't love you. That is a message of the wrong side. That's the message of the devil, that we can be so unworthy that God would cast us out and that we would not be a part of his family. Now, we're baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us he reconciles us to himself through his sacrifice. And we have to recognize that and say, yes, and I accept that. And I accept that you took upon yourself the sins of us all and that I have to be one of you. I have to be with one of you. I have to be with Christ. He is the one that will always gather us together. The Father is always out there. God is always looking. Do not ever think that you cannot come to him and speak about what is ever heavy on your heart. He will never cast us out. Thanks be to God for that gift of reconciliation. By the way, I love you too. <laughs>